Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, March 7th, 2018 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. About a month ago, a critical vulnerability was patched in the XM mail server. This is not often the default mail server in my experience, but it is available for many different distributions as a simple install from packages. A quick look at Shodan shows about 6.3 million exposed installs. And of course, mail servers, you want them to be exposed to the internet. Now, when this patch was originally released, it wasn't really given a lot of attention, given that it was only a one byte buffer overflow. So the attacker really here only has one byte to play with, but it isn't unheard of to actually use a one byte buffer overflow to actually then execute meaningful malicious code. Well, and what changed today is, and the reason I'm mentioning this is that there is now a detailed blog post showing you how to write an exploit for this specific vulnerability. So with that, it's pretty much open season on unpatched XM servers. Make sure that you address this flaw. Again, if you install from packages, it should already be part of your distribution and it should be a pretty straightforward update. Other mitigation techniques are tricky here. The flaw is in the base64 decode function and well, an awful lot of different data is base64 encoded in email. So this is exploitable via a wide range of commonly used SMTP functions like for example, eHello, mail from, receipt to and auth. And if following the February patch Tuesday updates from Microsoft, you had some problems with USB devices, in particular the ones that are sort of built in to your system like laptop cameras, then Microsoft has another patch for you. Apparently the problem here is that the Windows update skips installing the newer version of some critical drivers according to Microsoft and that causes then these devices to fail. A new update fixing this problem should pop up on your systems. It has been released today. This is not a security update. It's really just fixing that issue that was introduced by this security update from February. Microsoft's March security updates should be released in a week. And last week we had an article about the dangers of just uh, relying on cloud backups. Well, you never really should rely on any one single backup solution and case in point is 123reg. 123reg is a British company that does domain name registration and web hosting and apparently they had a critical hardware failure. Well, that helps, but when they restored customers websites, many of them went back as far as August 2017, which apparently was the date of the last backup that 123reg made. And Google released the monthly security update for Android. No big surprises here. A total of six vulnerabilities in the media framework. Four of them are critical and three of those can lead to remote code execution. Also four critical system vulnerabilities that can lead to remote code and execution. And then we have some more specific vulnerabilities that are being addressed in Nvidia and Qualcomm components in case your phone uses those. The Qualcomm vulnerabilities are so far interesting as there are two vulnerabilities that are critical that can lead to remote code execution. One is in the wireless network driver and essentially relates to how data is authenticated. So that could certainly be exploitable. The second one is actually in the very basic function that receives management frames. So I'm a little bit worried here that this uh, could actually have a quite a large attack cross section. Haven't really seen much written about this, but uh, watch out for any possible exploits here. 
I had a couple of questions regarding that contest I announced about, uh, well, uh, the Raspberry Pi giveaway. Uh, the way to participate is if you go to the podcast show note page, you have to go down quite a bit and I may make this a little bit more visible, but there is a discussion section. Now you have to log in to actually post something. So see if you can find it and I promise I'll redesign this page, but uh, this may take a little bit longer to actually make this more visible. And what I'm looking for are, for example, links that provide more background to some of the stories, corrections, or any other comments like this. So try to post something useful to other readers. That's it. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.